These are the weirdest, most useful types and today you learn what they all mean so you can extend these and make these your own. First, let's take a look at our custom tuple definition. The standard way to define tuples is as follows. You'll have an array containing all the different types that you'd like. But if you want these types to optionally be there, then you need to make all these types into a union type with the undefined next to it. This is quite hard to read and error prone if you forget a type and can be a bit annoying. What we're after is defining our tuples like this. Then the type itself transforming every single type inside of it to make all these conditional. We will start off by defining our transform type. This will simply take whatever type we have, like a string or a number, and make it into a union type by optionally making it undefined. It's worth mentioning that you can make this transform into whatever you want and even remove keys from an interface which we'll see later in the video. We now want to define our tuple. We'll start out by using the extends keyword to check if the type we are working with is an array of types. If it is, we will use the infer keyword and array the structure to get the first element in the array. The infer keyword simply lets us grab the type of the first element in an array. Now, if the type is in fact an array of types, use the transform type to make it an optional type and return the result. And if it's not an array of types, we'll simply return never. This is cool, but we are not done yet. So far, we've only dealt with the first element in the array. To get the rest, we will use the spread operator to infer the rest of the types and then pass it back recursively into the tuple to transform the rest of the types in the tuple. And here is our final result and a tuple type that allows all items to conditionally exist. Now that we've warmed up, let's take a look at something more interesting. We have two interfaces, which we made into a union type. What we're trying to achieve is changing this union type into an intersection so that all the keys are required. First, we'll use the extends keyword to check if the type we are working with is never. If so, we'll return the never type. If it's not, then we'll create a temporary function with an argument of type with the argument of type union. Under the hood, TypeScript will destructure the union, creating two separate functions, each with their own types like this. Next, we'll infer the argument from the function and return its type back. Under the hood, TypeScript will intersect all the returning types, changing all our original union types into an intersection. This might seem like magic, but once you read through this enough times, you'll understand. This type is not that useful just yet, but how about using it to turn unions into tuples instead? First, we'll define union as return types, which will use our magic of returning functions from a type that we saw earlier. We can then pass it into our original union to intersection type, which will turn our union into an intersection. Lastly, we will use more function and fur magic to finally recursively cycle through the type, passing in the remaining types as a result to end up with the following type that can turn our union into a tuple type. How about turning all the keys in an interface into a union and removing certain keys based on their type? We'll start by cycling through all the keys in an interface using the key or keyword. We then assign the type to the key to either string or never depending on whether the key was a string or not. Lastly, we filter through all the never types by using the key or keyword which removes all the keys that are of type never from the interface to end up with a union with keys that are only of type string. As you can see, if we use the remove number key from the interface, it will throw us an error. But if we use the test, which is of type string, it's all fine. Hope you learned something new, and I'll see you in the next one.